Hey guys, James with TFB TV. Today on TFB TV, I'm bringing you incredibly important information that previously you didn't give a shit about. What the f slings? Like, why do I care about slings? Turns out they are the most underrated gun accessory. And in terms of return on investment, dollar for dollar, probably the best performing accessory you can get for your rifle. A lot of people think slings are just pieces of cloth that attach your rifle to your body so you can carry it. They are so much more than that. And as you'll see in today's video, they make you a better shooter. They're right up there with an optic in terms of making your gun easier to shoot. You guys remember GunFest 2021, Blue Force Gear, my boys came down and we got a free lesson from Chris Sizelove. The guys at Blue Force Gear let us record this so we could bring it to you so you could see this really important information. And I think by the time you're done with this video, you're gonna be like, holy crap, James, that was really useful. I don't mind spending 50 or 100 bucks on a sling now. I reduced this three hour course down to 20 minutes. Make it bite sized for you guys. So open up because here comes the airplane of knowledge about the sling. Gents, thanks for coming out. Uh, my name is Chris Sizelove. I'm director of training for Blue Force Gear. Uh, today we're going to talk all things sling. You know, what, what they need to do, why they need to do it, what value they have, you know, besides a fucking strap that just keeps a weapon attached to your body, which may or may not be a good thing. Just recently retired from the military. I did 16 years in the 75th Ranger Regiment as an assaulter and a sniper and a recce guy and a breacher and I got bit by a dog once and all that cappy horse shit. Um, did a couple more years with a different agency, just retired um, back to Savannah, linked up with Blue Force Gear and now I have the awesome job of traveling around and doing training, training and education on our products and things like that. It's great. Get guns rigged up with slings properly, which I think is probably gonna take a little bit. All right, so no big deal. We'll, we'll lay them out, we'll talk about you know the differences how to get the most capability out of your sling depending on what platform you're mounting it to you know a sling itself gives us a lot of capability it's probably 60 percent of the equation uh 40 the other 40 percent of the equation is probably how you're mounting it all right which is why blue force gear makes a whole host of mounting options because what we find is you know american guns kind of have an affinity for things that euro trash guns don't and vice versa and we got to figure out how to how to get the most capability out of out of guns from around the world all right when it comes to a sling we'll get everything rigged up we'll do some live fire stuff to kind of ram home some of the stuff we that we did didactics on and that'll be about it all right what do we need a sling to do to be optimized like what you know optimization of a sling uh, my humble opinion is that a sling needs to do three things for me to be an optimized sling. If it doesn't do these three things, then you kind of reduce it all the way down to it's a fucking parade sling. It doesn't do anything but attach a gun to your body. All right. A sling has to give me the ability to have a repeatable and reliable front sling position. And you're looking at it right now. All right. Um, the reason I want a reliable and repeatable front sling position is because most of the time, uh, unfortunately, you know, my hands are off the gun. So whenever my hands are off the gun, I need this fucking thing retained to me. All right, what I don't need it doing is bouncing all around. I also don't need it pointing at anything it's not supposed to be pointed at. So if I assume this solid position, I know that this barrel is going to be four, six inches off my sport side foot, and it's going to stay there, right? So even when I'm walking around and shit, this thing's not bouncing all around. It's not hitting me and Mr. Happy and all that kind of good stuff. Um, it's a solid kind of administrative position, especially in a team environment. If I got a whole SWAT team smoking and joking around a bear cat, and all of them are, you know, we've ruthlessly enforced having a solid front sling position if your hands are off the gun. It's kind of cool to look around and be like, it's unsafe, right? You can kind of see it. You're like, yep, you're good. All right. So it's like, good, good, good. What the fuck, asshole? You know, you're, so kind of a good thing from that position uh, from an organizational environment, you know. This is where I need the rifle to be during a pistol transition. All right, because the worst thing that can happen is big gun goes down. I got to get rid of it. I got to pull that pistol. But I also have to be dynamic with that pistol which negates all of the flat range, like just throw the damn thing away and let it bounce around because none of us can shoot pistols worth a fuck anyway. And then once you get 12 pounds banging around the front of you, trying to get that thing, you know, you're not going to be making high percentage shots. So if I can get this thing retained to my body when I'm hands off the gun, even when I'm dynamic, that's what I want. It actually works a lot better with a magazine in the rifle because this sling runs over the top of the magazine, just traps it to my body. Number two, all right, a good optimized sling 
will make what is inherently a non-stable firing platform more stable through the use of the sling, right? And we get that through a combination of A, having an adjustable sling, all right? And B, having it sized and fitted properly to the rifle and the shooter. If we're up here and I'm standing offhand and I have the time and inclination and training to just rotely be like, hmm, this ain't bad. You know, I got four points of contact on the gun, but if I wanted five, I can reach up here and crank this thing in, and now I have a fifth point of contact. So again, it's gonna make an inherently non-stable firing platform more stable, all right? Kind of the collective thought process is that adjustable slings are adjustable for some sort of comfort factor. You know, you see dudes like, ah, fuck, I gotta get this thing out, there it is, right? It's not on here because it's a comfort factor. If it's not giving you the ability to make a non-stable firing platform from standing, kneeling, or prone, more stable, then it's not doing anything for you, all right? You're, you're leaving money on the table. So kind of when we rig your guys' stuff up, what we're looking for is whatever adjustment mechanism you have on the sling is always in your workspace, which takes a little bit of playing with it once we get the guns out, but hey, we're gonna take up, take up a little bit here, take up a little bit back here, make sure my adjustment slider is always in this area, and then I'll bring you up into an on-target position, but crank it in, because if you can crank it all the way in, and you still got this, it's not doing anything for you, all right? So what, what we kind of shoot for is that the last, last inch and a half of that adjustment is like uncomfortably tight. I mean, it just whoosh, sucks everything in, all right? And the third thing, again, is uh, lesson learned during the GWAT, all right, is I have to have a QD capability in the front, in the rear, all right? Preferably both, all right? But I'm willing to take at least one. If you're laying on the ground, all right, and you have a rifle attached to you, we have to get that rifle off you before we can do anything else, all right? Um, if you are shot, maybe we could put a tourniquet on you. Everything that happens after that, that fucking gun's gotta come off you, all right? So if you can just imagine in your head, if you don't have a frame of reference, a dude in full kit, fucking helmet, antennas, nods, all that shit, you know, he looks like a yard sale all wrapped up, and he's got a gun attached to him, and it's dark, and you're trying to get that gun off him. It, it's a gangbang, all right? Dudes are grabbing rifles, trying to get it up over his arm and his head and his helmet and everything, and that thing's waving all around, and you're praying to God somebody doesn't crack one off, make another casualty or something like that. So the QDs give me the ability, give anybody the ability, so no matter what position you're in, laying, whatever, even if you're not completely out of the count, but you're, you're doing your own self-aid, is like, I can reach over, grab a fucking QD somewhere on that gun and just drag it straight off and we're good to go. It's very efficient, it's also very safe, which we like both of those things, all right? Those are kind of the three things that make a sling a sling. If it's not doing any of those things for you, you're leaving a lot of money on the table, all right? And it's just kind of a piece of cloth that attaches a, a rifle to your body. Uh, a single point sling does none of what I just talked about, okay? Unless it has some sort of QD capability on the front, on the, on the front of it, okay? Um, so kind of kind of a bad bad move. Not a fan of, of single points for 99% of, of application on firearms. Having said that, this is what we're gonna do next. Grab some rifles, we're gonna put them on the table. I have a whole host of slings here. Um, at, at, the, at the heart of all of our slings, they're the same. They, they all have this closed loop, you know, Vickers sliding mechanism here. The only thing different on any of our slings is some widths, some pads and some attachment mechanisms, all right? And that's really about it. So we'll get everything rigged up properly to your gun and to you, and then uh, we'll start going through carbine flow drill, and then we'll start shooting. We're gonna attach this thing, actually. Your right-handed fire? Yep. Congratulations, you won, you won the genetic lottery. Is anybody here wrong-handed? I, I like to mount QDs on the other side of the buttstock, so when it's in your shoulder, this thing comes right up over the top. It's not banging around back in here. Yeah, come up on target. So you're there, and then it, here's the adjuster, all right? Yeah, way super loose, right? So we'll keep it up there. Okay. We're just gonna start with it right here in what should be your workspace, like right, right in here, so you can always reach down and grab it. We'll take a bunch of slack out of the middle portion here. We're gonna have to crank something out of the back here. There you go. Now come up on target. Yeah. Reach down, pull that thing in. Oh, yeah. Is it doing anything for you? Yeah. Yep, a little bit. Now reach down, crank it back, and you 
now you're back to your workspace. Yeah, you can do whatever you want with okay. it. So if you're pretty pretty much good there. Yeah. You know, you're on target, you're not getting getting anything out of the sling, right? Mm -hmm. So go ahead and get on target and then reach down with that support hand because we've adjusted and sized this so that that slider is always in your workspace. Now what do you got? Yeah, now it's nice and tight. Now it's nice and tight. So basically we've added a fifth point of contact on the gun. You got sport side hand, strong side hand, cheek weld, stock weld, and this. Okay. So again, the goal is to get your wobble zone when you need it to go from whatever it is to because you got a solid fifth point of contact on that gun. And at any time, just like you did, as soon as you're out of it, pull that adjuster tab back, and now you got plenty of workspace to feed it, fix it, change positions, do all that kind of stuff. So the carbine flow drill is broken down into a couple elements. All right, the first one being, hey, you're on target. You've already made the decision to fire, you are firing. Cool, all right, so we'll, we'll kind of start there. But on target is literally that, everything's good to go. I've already made the decision to fire, weapons up, looking at red dot, process and trigger. We're, we're good there, all right, that's on target. The first ready position is the high ready, all right? High ready is defined as I got both hands on the gun, all right? I'm, the gun's low kind of hip area. Everyone's kind of got different arm lengths and shoulders and wrists and things like that. But I'm looking over the top of this freaking gun looking for something to shoot, okay? I'm good to go. If I see something that needs ballistic attention, I'm just gonna punch that rifle straight out, get red dot, get cheek weld, get shoulder weld, and do work, all right? That's the high ready, all right? Coming down a little bit lower, we have retention. Retention looks just like this with a carbine, all right? There's gonna be some times, predominantly in CQB environments, where I'm gonna have to orient this gun I'm going to have to meet an angle of exposure with an angle of attack, but I'm also going to need to use my support side hand for something. Typically it's doorknobs, might have to reach over, pick something up, whatever. That's retention, all right? Coming down lower, we have what we call the low ready, which looks just like this, okay? Point of performance for the low ready predominantly is I need to swing my head 180 degrees without my chin smashing into the buttstock, all right? It's a human physiological issue that like if your chin is in contact with this buttstock you're not going to move your head the best you be, the best you're going to get is this all right which doesn't yeah it doesn't bode well for situational awareness and your eyes don't really work like that anyway so the low ready is low enough where like hey i can swing my head 180 degrees and not smash my fucking head into that buttstock carry position looks like this the first one we have is called the high carry it looks just like this, <laughs> okay? Right. I got the gun anchored here, I got the gun anchored here, and I'm putting a little bit of pressure. Works better if you have a helmet on. I give it a little bit of pressure on that helmet, curve the magazine inward, because I'm gonna be in a tight space probably. I'm gonna have people around me. I don't want anybody to whack this gun. So from this position, I can work in tight spaces. I'm not flagging anybody that doesn't need to have a gun pointed at them. I got people in front of me. Somebody can literally step right in front of me. I'm good. All right, they're good. I'm good. Everything's solid. Coming off a of high carry, we have low carry. Looks just like this. All right, low carry, that barrel is straight the fuck between your feet. That's it, okay? For the same reasons. Because I'm going to be in a tight space. I'm going to be in a team environment, all right? Team environment can also mean, for you guys who are just homeowners, your fucking family, all right? Kids, innocents, people that don't need to be shot, okay? So... If it is straight down between my feet, I have both hands on the gun and it's controlled, I can move anywhere I want, people can move anywhere they want in front of me, and we're all good. All right, once I wind up in a spot where I can do ballistic work, then what can I do? Assume a ready position, okay? Uh, we've all been, you know, train raped by YouTube videos uh, uh, about this, like ad nauseum. Yeah, yeah, I got it, you know. If, if the only thing we gave a fuck about was a shot timer, then sure, we can get out here and we can measure high ready, low ready, whatever. We can do that all day long. In a working environment, there are going to be times where you have to use one or the other, all right, because of those pesky four rules of firearm safety. What I'm going to do is put you guys online, we'll go through all the positions, and then I'll say shit like on target, high carry, high ready, on target, low carry, you know, shit like that. Just move you through everything. First ready position we're gonna run is high ready. Again, high ready looks just like this, looking over the top of the gun. If you find yourself in high ready, if you got short arms and a big gun, especially with a bunch of shit hanging off the front of it, and you find yourself having to go like this to look around the gun, it ain't for you, okay? And in that case, just go run high carry, all right? Because what I don't need this thing to do is get in my visual way, because I need to 
assess what the hell's happening, okay? So, high ready, go. And I'll come around and just look. Yeah, we look pretty good. On target. All right, next one's low ready. For low ready, point that thing at the baseboards. Get it down to the point. Go ahead, low ready. That's low carry, low ready. Just point it at the baseboards. Now, swing your head 180 degrees. Look at your partner. Again, if your head is smashing into any part of that weapon, it ain't low enough, all right? But if, you're, if it is, you're good to go. Right on. On target. Low ready. On target. High ready. On target. All right, from the low ready position. Two rounds, center mass of your target. Nobody's cheating. Kill him. From the low ready position. Two rounds, center mass on your target. Kill him. High ready. Ready, ready, ready. There we go. Low ready. Low carry. Kill him. Two rounds, center mass on your target. Kill him. What we're gonna talk next, um, we're gonna talk prone, all right? Shooting from prone, but we're gonna do it kind of under the auspices of this is one of those times where a good sling that's well adjusted to the firer and the weapon will give you a lot of added capability, okay? Nine times out of 10, prone is viewed as one of those like administrative tasks. Like I gotta, I gotta get down in prone and check this rifle's fucking zero, which means I'm gonna shoot three or four or five like slow ass fucking rounds and make sure everything's good to go. And we don't really get the value out of prone that we could be getting, okay? You need to be accurate, but you need to be rapidly accurate. You know what I mean? Because when we talk shooting positions, guys, you can take one accurate shot from any fucking position you want. <laughs> Doesn't matter. As long as that red dot's where it needs to be and you process the trigger without disturbing the red dot, fucking round's gonna go there, okay? But the rapidity in which you can do that is what matters. So now we're talking recoil management, things like that, okay? So prone, when I get down into prone, I'm gonna pull this thing back with all my might. I'm gonna anchor this fucking gun to the ground, all right? Put that red dot where I want it to go and start squeezing this trigger, start doing work, all right? Now, what I can do with this sling, if it's well adjusted, all right, is take an extra second, crank this thing all the way in, all right, get it real super tight, and what you guys may find is you can basically press this trigger as fast as you want, and that red dot is going to stay where it, where it needs to be. If, uh, if you don't mount the gun to the ground, what's going to happen? You're going to be up here, and every time you take a shot, it does this and you're gonna be, you're, you have to wait on that red dot to settle. I don't want to wait for it to settle, I just don't want it to fucking move in the first place. So get as low as you can, climb on top of this gun, anchor it to the ground, anchor it to your shoulder, adjust the sling, and take your shots. The best way to test this, if you've never done it, is uh, I like shooting a 100 point aggregate. Everybody done that on B8s at 50 yards? You know, get, get yourself a shot timer. It's one of the times that they're really useful get down in whatever prone you normally shoot from, shoot 10 rounds, score it, all right? And then come back, hopefully under the guise of somebody that can kind of talk you through it, which is what we're gonna do now. Get you down solidly, crank that sling in, press the trigger as fast as you fucking can. As fast as you see that red dot being where it needs to be, press the damn trigger. Let the wheels come off, okay? And you'll probably be surprised at the shot group that you find down there. They're gonna be there, okay? So, do I have any questions? Low ready, everything's good to go. Uh, the most efficient way, I think, to hit prone is I'm gonna move my sport side foot back and just drop straight down into Monica. All right, has anybody ever seen this position before? <laughs> All right, yeah, some of the older guys got that joke, yeah. Um, uh, drop down into frickin' Monica and like kind of assume a high ready as you're planting out and just get your feet back and mount that frickin' gun. And then squirt that thing in there and we're good to go, all right? Uh, 
uh, not a not 100% of shooters are getting the maximum capabilities out of their sling, i.e. it's not optimized. So we talked about earlier today, you know, the three points of sling optimization. The number one and number three, you could probably be like, I don't give a fuck, okay? Um, because if you don't if you don't believe in front sling position, you're like, that's out, I don't care about that. All right, and number three, the QD thing, you're like, that doesn't matter to me, I don't give a fuck, that's stupid. All right, gotcha. All right, but number two, every shooter can get value out of, which is A, you know, if your sling doesn't make an inherently non-stable firing platform more stable through the use of the sling, then is you're not getting no value out of it. You know what I mean? And that is completely a byproduct of if it is sized to you and the gun and your kit and all that kind of good stuff. You know what I mean? So it may or may not add something to what you're already doing if, if you're already not constantly adjusting your sling to get the most value out of it, right? So do I have any questions? Concerns. I can be found on the error net, uh, blueforcegear.chris at blueforcegear.com. Uh, but yeah, I'll give you guys cards and all that happy horse shit. Thanks, Chris. Cool. Thank you. Any, anything else? Was, yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, yeah. real down and dirty. Uh, thank you guys for listening to me and not, you know, motherfucking me too much. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. I was just clapping at the bugs. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to kill bugs. <laughs> Let's line everybody up.